Is a Steam Crave Aroma Miser Supreme V2 best RTA of all time? I don't know. Let's talk about that. It's Vape AM. We're going to talk about the Aroma Miser Supreme V2 and its supremacy as an RTA today. Good morning. I'm Eli Juicy Jones. This is Orbital Vaping Headquarters. You are watching Vape AM, the morning show for vape. Every Wednesday and Saturday morning at 8. We come at you, woo, and we talk vape, we drink coffee, we wake up, and we build and do tutorials, and we also build a community and try to understand science. I want to thank everybody who's here live, right there in the audience, and if you're watching on the replay, thank you too. You can chat just like you're live, like anybody else. Just click on that chat thing, come up, start typing, everyone does it, don't worry about it. Nice to see you too. If you're new, tell us where you're at, what you're vaping on, and how you find out about us. Join us on Discord, too. There's a click down the link below. We have a special chat for Discord. And uh, it's cool. We're there all day. It's awesome. And uh, also there during the show. I want to thank Michaela and our friend, Praetorian, Weird Will Ed, Dude Mang, what's up, man, Gary, and especially James Rivera, love you, especially Gary, I want to thank today because Gary is the one who donated this Aromamizer V2, Supreme V2, to the channel. So... It is a funny thing. We always, oh, I'm not focused. We always sort of chat and joke in the Discord about whoever's in. Now, I'm in Cali Club because I have a Cali now, and now I'm in the Aromamizer Serene V2 Club. Now, we've had the Aromamizer and the Aromamizer Titan. I'm sure you guys remember the Titan, the huge one that I'm wielding. Humongous. That wasn't a lot of vape, was it? Oh, because the watch got turned down. Uh, but this thing is just not practical as its problem. It's cool. Flavor is amazing. Uh, but this is humongous. So today we have the 30 millimeter one. So thank you, Gary. You're awesome. Hey, there's Jolly Mon. You're new. Thank you and welcome. And say hello to Badass Vapor for me because he's... And I'm happy to hear his name again, too. That's awesome. Hey, Rob, there you are. That's our good friend, I'm Sapper. Good to see you. Daniel Hill, the Jameson, everybody. Good morning, everybody. So we're looking at the Steam Crave Aroma Mazo. And the Aroma Mazo, you guys will remember my original Aroma Mazo. I'm not sure how many of you have been watching for all three years of this broadcast. Look at the dust on this. <laughs> I pulled it out of the archive. Um, but here's my original Aroma Mazo. Didn't really love this thing. Luke sent me this, Polish Rapes UK. And I uh, miss him. Love you, Luke. And I then got. The Titan, which is right here. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. How do I do it? And the Titan is just a humongous thing. Absolutely hella super gigantic. I'm going to move a few things away here. Um, and cool, but has just the flaw that it's too large. And so, and being impractical. for me. But the cool thing is that the mechanism is basically the same. So you guys remember this video are going to be able to be familiar with what we're going to do today because it's a shrunken down version of it. It's a little bit different. You'll see the differences. And it's also a Velocity deck here on the new one. And this is pretty cool. Oh, I just realized something. One second. Let me just adjust one little thing. And hello, Esteban Mario. Great to see you. Victorian, Rob Lee, everybody. It's great to see you. Give me one second. Frequent viewers won't be surprised, but I forgot these in the ultrasonic, so I ran to the kitchen and I came back and get them. Isn't that funny? Now, you guys know I always put everything through the ultrasonic. So whenever you get a new atomizer or a new device, even from a friend, if it comes through the mail, just put it through the ultrasonic. It doesn't hurt you, and you always can capture little pieces of debris or junk or any kind of dirtiness that comes from the factory or anything. Just don't take the chance, because I've seen metal shavings in these things from the factory, and... Just all kinds of debris and other kinds of stuff. There's no, there's no point in taking a chance. Always wash off. If you don't have an ultrasonic, wash them in the sink. Take it all apart. Uh, wash it, rinse, rub with your fingers. Uh, if you like, you can use one drop of soap. No more. In a bowl of water. And then uh, clean them off. Let them dry. You can do what I'm doing, which is I throw them onto a paper towel. 
there it is. And then I'll let this just sit for a second while we open the box. There's the pieces of our Aroma Miser Supreme V2 right there, and that is awesome. And here is the actual box, my friends. This comes in a nice kit. I don't know why that's freaking out there. This comes in a really nice kit. And uh, extra glass, plenty of O-rings, and um, the only thing this doesn't come with that the Aroma Miser Titan came with is um, an extra deck. You can buy a postless deck like on the Aroma Miser Titan uh, for this thing as well, just so you know, and a single coil deck. But I hear that they are not very good. And that, um, and I've seen the single, the postless deck, and as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of postless decks. I've seen the postless deck for this, and it doesn't look that great um, because of the way it's constructed. It looks like it's just made to leak. So this is the Supreme Dri Dripper tank system. This is convertible, just like the Titan, from an RTA to an RDA. This one's in matte gunmetal. They spelled matte wrong. SC204, steam crate. And it has enhanced airflow and juice flow system, which is like it is in the Titan. And I'll show you guys how it works when we do it here. This thing is really great. And here are some paragraphs of information. New air intake design, enhanced juice flow, reduced condensation, and air turbulence, which is true. I thought that was kind of BS, but it's actually true. Velocity style deck, which is great. Compatible with the original Supreme B1. Okay, that's great. It's got a magnet box, extra glass, as you see here. A kit with everything you need, y'all. Uh, Marco's asking if this is available or pre-order. It's been available for quite a while, Marco. So yeah, you can buy these things and I'll find you a link for them. It comes with hardened stainless steel and soft stainless steel grubs replacements, which is cool. Single post decks for restricting the airflow and the single post inside and all the O-rings you need. So great kit, these guys. This is really cool. Love Steam Crave for doing that. Let me pop that out of here. Comes with the Allen key that you'll need. And I use my own Allen key. And this one is, uh, I'm pretty sure this one is the 1.5 millimeter. But we'll check it out for sure. I have two tools here, so I don't know which one I used. Um, Steam Crave sticker, which is great. And a pretty good manual. I, you know, I don't know, frequent viewers will know that I'm a manual reader. I believe in reading the manual. I'm not a subscriber to that old cheesy, I don't read the manual stuff. I, I think that's just declaring that you're stupid. In my opinion, you may as well just read the manual, because why not? We can all read, and I don't mean read dumb things, but this one is, uh, is pretty darn good. I read through it, and they do describe the basic geometry, and they go through the basic steps of how to build it in a pretty good way. I don't think this is going to turn you into a pro uh, just by the pictures, but they do show you the basic steps of what to do. Um, but they don't tell you how to wick it. This is kind of irritating actually, and I'll point out, it says wicking is the key, make sure that you put the right amount of cotton, but they don't demonstrate more. They do say that the postless deck needs more cotton and the aromatizer Titan as well needs more cotton. So good on them. Um, but, well, wait a minute, maybe I'm not as irritated. I've, I've read this a couple of times, but now that I'm reading again, they really are being quite specific. So, like I said, they did a pretty good job. And um, and I was wrong. They did actually tell you specifically. I don't know why I forgot that. And so, good on them. Good manual, guys. I'm pretty down with this. For those of you just tuning in, I'm Eli Juicy Jones, and this is Orbital Vaping Headquarters. You're watching Vape AM, the morning show for vaping. And we are working on the Aroma Miser Supreme V2 here. Don't forget that there are um, affiliate links in Discord for you guys to use. If you guys want to purchase any of these products, it doesn't matter what you're shopping for. If you're shopping for cotton or wire or this thing or anything else, we have discount codes and affiliate links for Heaven Gifts, Vapor DNA, and some other places all over the internet, including Fast Tech. And so if you uh, care to, go to Discord, click on those links before you go shopping for stuff, and they donate money from your purchase to the channel. So it helps me. It doesn't cost you any more money. So just saying, that's great. And welcome to everybody who just tuned in. Hey, the Jameson. Thanks for answering questions for people too. And hey, Jim Plum, great to see you. So we're just taking this thing apart. We just got the box open. It's a good package. Put it back together. And then we're going to assemble the RDA. 
together. There it is. So let's give it a little bit of a dry. Take some parts out. I'll show you guys how this thing converts from RDA to RTA. And you know, I dare say this is one of the best RTAs I've had so far. It's great. It's very one of the it has a little bit of a detraction, and that is that it's a little bit over-engineered, which I love, but that that might make it a little intimidating for some people or maybe beginners. But this little episode and these kinds of tutorials are designed to kind of take some of the mystique out of these things and make you a little bit less afraid of them. So it always Experiment. Try stuff. Take it apart, put it back together. Take it apart, but to get, put it back together. Build it, rebuild it, build it, rebuild it. So this one works just like the Aroma Miser Titan did. There's a top ring. And you must screw in. Oh, I got it wrong. Lolzers. Remember, if you can read this, then you got it. So you take the bottom, and then you screw in this tube. This is the main air tube. <laughs> I want to thank Stephen for donating 10 bucks to the Super Chat system. Thank you so much, Stephen. And that is hilarious. He said, buy some carb cleaner. <laughs> that is a funny inside joke between us. We were just talking about carbs and all that. Remember, look, you can, you can cut yourself on these. So be careful. I did this this morning, disassembling this atomizer. And I'm going to show you guys a little trick for disassembling this thing in a second that makes it a little bit easier. It's how I did it. Um, so we've taken the Aromamizer Supreme Top. This is a top fill system. And then we grab the base. Oh, and I've forgotten one more thing. So now that we have a Super Chat donation, thank you so much. And now I have to go grab the deck. Of course, I'm back. It only takes a second. My apartment is so tiny. That's pretty funny. So you guys will have to forgive me. I, you know, running a YouTube channel and having a life. Sometimes you just something. So there we go. And besides, as you know, this is the channel of real people and real things. So I am just like you and nobody else. I'm not special or gifted or amazing. And I don't edit things to make them look different. So we're going to take out these coils that I was using yesterday. And uh, look how gunky they are. I was putting, I put seriously uh, nine or 10 different brands of juice in it, all kinds of brands of juice. And uh, I'll show you how this thing fits together inside here. What I've been doing is just fitting it onto a mod to get resistances and stuff. You can screw just the base down inside. Any kind of building platform onto a mod. And yes, it is the 1.27 millimeter Allen key. So it's the smallest Allen key I've got except for guitars. Just so you know. Just focus that in a little bit closer. In fact, I think I'm going to zoom in. Are you guys annoyed that you're not closer to the deck? There you go. So we're going to get this disgusting thing out. Put another one in. And I'm going to show you how the whole thing assembles. And as you can tell, I accidentally, you know, I put this on the sink and I forgot to clean the actual deck. But you'll see, here's how I disassemble it. And I'll show you how I did the wicking on this. Like we can get way in there before I do it again for you. But as you'll see, I have the wicks making a little loop and they just touch on the bottom. And I'm trying to make them not quite touch on the bottom because there are four holes in here, as you can see. And so that's how we're going to do this this time. You see how those wicks are real short? In fact, these might even still be a little long. Um, and every time I do it, it's a little bit different. It's not like um, you're always going to nail it every single time. I mean, I, can, I could brag and say that that's true sometimes, and I do feel that way sometimes, but don't be intimidated. It's not, it's not true that you're, everything is always perfect all the time. There are some devices that make that easy, like the, like the Cali. This atomizer, this thing right here is pretty much always right all the time, but that's because it's special and it's well made. Okay, so I'm taking this off here. Hey, Plumsy007 also sent two, two pounds. Sorry, I don't know what the exchange rate is. Thank you so much from our UK viewer uh, to the Super Test system. And he said, get some more quick wicks. And you know what? I do need more quick wicks. And I talked to them the other day 
And uh, when we get to the wicking, I'll tell you guys a little story about what they're doing with that. Thanks for reminding me, actually. You guys are the best. I really appreciate it. Every single cent you guys send me helps buy cotton and do things like tell people to join us at the West Coast Vape Expo. Can you see this thing right here and here? We're going to be in Bremerton, Washington, July 6th, 7th, and 8th. Come join us. Come hang out. Meet me. Brady's going to be there. Rob's going to be there. Michelle's going to be there. A lot of people are going to be there, and we're going to have a great time, along with Van Gogh Vapes. iJoy's going to be there. You're going to meet Jade and Tao and all of them, and we are going to have a great time. So if you're anywhere near Western Washington and Seattle, come. And make sure you look me up. So let me put this thing together. You grab the deck. And the deck floats on its O-ring. Don't think that the deck is secured in there by anything except for an O-ring. Do you see how the juice flow works? The juice is coming around the outside inside these things. And then it's coming in contact with your wicks where the holes come out here. So the wicks are sort of here. And um, the e-liquid is channeled through here into those through this, which is that there's actually a lock that sits on top of this. And that is this guy. When you're putting these together, just look at them and make sure that the symbols make sense. And that's how you know what goes up and down. So this is actually a lock, or I'm sorry, a juice flow control ring. And this isn't a lot different than the one that's on your k fund, But the difference here is that this one is sort of linearly designed. It's designed to be very, very flat. But the channeling system isn't so crazy different from it, just so you know. So we take the deck. We put the ring on there, and there we go. From here, baby, you see how we have a velocity deck inside there. I'm really just trying to show you guys the anatomy of this in great detail. And you want to sandwich. There's an O-ring inside of there and an O-ring up inside of there. You want to sandwich the glass inside here and to make it fairly easy. Now, I want to warn you guys, you want to screw this in really tight. And to screw this in really tight, you're also going to have trouble getting it unscrewed. <laughs> it's like my mama used to say, you can screw it, but you can't unscrew it. But she was wrong. You can unscrew this. I'm screwing this in with a paper towel now just so it's tight. And that's, that's pretty good. I'm probably not going to screw it in any more than that right now. But I want to show you guys, when you have trouble undoing an RTA with a two- or three-piece design like this, either it's this with the stem and it's screwed in here, or it's this with three pieces screwed in both places like this one is. Occasionally, uh, there are two pieces coming up, screwing into here. But So I've got this finger tight, but what if you're screwing this and you just can't get it undone? So here's what to do. We take the top or take the bottom and hold it with a paper towel. And say in this case, I can hold it real tight with my thumbs inside these airflow holes. And then you take a pair of pliers and then to avoid damaging your RTA, you put the plier nose inside the juice flow on the top, and then you turn. I'm pushing with my left hand, pulling with my right, and you see how I got it loose? So this is a nearly foolproof way to do minimal, minimal, minimal damage to your RTA. You see how I've got little tiny nicks in there? But that's not interfering with any flow or anything on here. And so this one can be a bear, and this happens. So there. Get some more quick wigs. You guys are funny. So now you have the top part assembled. The really only other part is the drip tip along with the base. And look, I always use the Petri drip tip. This is the stock drip tip. It's a friction fit 510 only. There is no 810s. Their drip tip is very good for flavor. So I've got no complaints. I put on the Petri dot mod uh, 510, which is slightly better. The Petri dot mod 510 turns a 510 into an 810, guys. That's what it does. I don't know why no, everyone doesn't buy those. Um, and look at how the base fits in here. Do you see how there's slots? And there's a little tiny piece of metal on the outside of the base. And what happens is you try to arrange these things, set it in there, and then you screw back. Oh, I'm sorry. I totally forgot. One, there's one more part. What am I doing? There's an airflow control. Duh. And you'll notice that the airflow control is dual cyclops and it's got a grating in there to keep some of the liquid inside the device because that is a massive, massive airflow and goes directly to the coils. So good on Steam Crave for designing this deep hole 
with the grating on there to keep the juice in. That does really well. And the airflow control wearing goes with the skinny part to the right. Or at least that's how mine came. I haven't tried turning it over. Maybe you could. I don't know what effect that would have, if any. I'm going to be a little different and try it. And then this just goes in the bottom. And remember, to get this in here correctly, it's going to feel like a lot of machining stuff. Like, what's going on? I don't really fit. You screw backwards, and you'll find it. You hear a click. You hear that click? Then you just go. You hear that click. Now, here's what I've noticed. I've noticed that I had trouble seating this thing several times. If you just do that, it's like, wait, hold on. That doesn't work. And so you have to back this out if you still see a little gap. And I'm just turning counterclockwise still, unscrewing still. And it's still caught, and I don't, oops. There is a little metal tab that has to line up. Do you see how that there is two taller ones here, a little cutout? That little cutout needs to line up roughly with the top of that juice flow thing. And so it can sometimes be a little bit difficult to nail it. And I haven't done it again. Oh, my friend Rob just clarified this for me. He made this a million times easier. He said, Juicy, just put the deck in the tank first. Why didn't I think of that? I'm an idiot. There's my little tab. Thanks, Rob. Wow, I've been doing this by trial and error for a week. I love you, buddy. You see, look, it fits right in. Thank you. You made my life easy. I was doing it the hard way the whole time. Hey, this should be a lesson for you. I'm Eli G.C. Jones. This is Orbital Vaping Headquarters. You're watching Vape AM, the world's only and best vape morning show, every Wednesday and Saturday, 8 a.m. This should be a lesson for you that everybody isn't perfect. I'm not some angel up above in heaven who's perfect on everything and knows everything. I learn things from you. You learn things from me. We all go together. It's been the way for three years. Our anniversary is coming up. This is another great example of how we all learn from each other. And I was doing just fine. I was doing it the hard way, and I was going to show you the wrong way. So thanks, Rob. I just love synergy like that. So the easy thing is throw that in there, and then this will screw right the hell on. You'll have no problem. <laughs> oh, it is going to be fun at West Coast Vape Expo. And so you have a juice flow control that goes from closed. And Eric was going to say the same things. Thank you so much. You guys are great. The reason why this seems weird right now is that my hands are wet. <laughs> and so it's like, oh my God. But these things actually move quite easily. So we're going to take this thing apart again. Build it. Take it apart, build it. And then uh, I got a couple of just cheap coils. I don't have anything great to put in here right now. And uh, we should also talk about just atomizers and RTAs and what happens with these things? I'm curious if you guys have questions. I'm looking for an, uh, my vape stand. There it is. I'm curious if you guys have questions about RTAs. I get asked about RTAs all the time. I kind of specialize in wicking them. One thing I was going to tell you guys is that we're going to wick this with quick wicks. I'm not going to use my normal juicy wicks. I'm going to use quick wicks from Texas Tough, which is just about to be renamed to... Um, tough wicks. This is so cool. Uh oh, I found an O ring. I don't like that. That makes me nervous. But it's not a big O ring. Look at that. That O ring was just laying on my batteries. Huh. So there is that. You guys can see it. We're going to put two coils in there. Basic little tiny wicks. It really. Actually, was surprisingly, it took less wick than I thought it would, which was surprising for me. There's one coil. Trying to get these to two and a half millimeters, or maybe they're three now. There we go. Let me see what size my kit is. Three millimeter. Okay, so these are going to be two and a half or three millimeter. They're going to come out a little smaller because I'm going to tug on them some. And here they are. And one thing I'm going to do is 
I'm going to take the pliers and I'm going to bend them. It's very important in this thing that you put the coils in so that the left one here goes down and the right one, which is going to come around, goes um, to the top. And the reason is because it interferes with the wicking less. And so the way I do that is I simply bend that there. And then we bend it out at a 90 degree angle. And you can do that with a tool or you can eyeball it like I'm doing it. And so that is going to go on the bottom. And now I'm going to bend this one. such that it goes into the top of the right-hand side of the post. I think that's the positive. It sure is. And the reason that you do this is because it interferes with the wicking less. And this combined with using our Texas Tough is going to give us a superior performance here. Be careful when you're doing that. You don't want to crimp your Clapton's. We got that in. I'm putting that in. I'm going to put this in, trim it, and take it out. And the reason is because we're in a real tight space here. Oh my God, you guys can't see anything. There you go. So, what I've done, I'm so sorry, I realized I was working off the camera. So, what I'm doing is I just took this one and I bent it by hand with my thumb. You can use a pair of pliers. I don't, you don't want to use pliers that have any kind of texture on the end on here. These are smooth pliers in this case, but you can bend them. And then this one on the other side, I also bent similarly. Mine looks a little bit ghetto. You guys are better than I am at this. And then we take this and you want to make sure that this one goes into the bottom. And that one goes into the top and you're asking Juicy, why am I doing that? And then like I said, the reason is because it's going to interfere with the action of the wicking better. Less, not better. Lol. I put in the top one or the bottom one. I'm putting in the top one on the right in the positive post. Also, I need to focus it. Fuzzy. Yeah. Big thumbprint on there. My ape thumbprint. Need my Allen key to open that up a little bit more. Get everything through. So I'm going to put these in here. Then I'm going to trim them and take them out. So you see I have a little bit lump right there. I'm going to grab my pliers. Pull the end. Time for me to swap this out with my left hand. And Ford F-150 Angelo is pointing out that smaller coils work better in here, and it's absolutely true. Don't try to put huge coils in these things. That's absolutely true. The Aromamizer is made to be a good flavor atomizer. It's not really made to set records for the sizes of coil that you're putting into it. Yeah, when, we, when I do the other one, I'll show you guys what it looks like with the other way. And you'll see how it interferes with the cotton more on this side anyway. Because the thing is, it's very important that your cotton fall down into these holes a certain way. So right there, that's going to go straight down inside there. And this only has to go over one little hoop. And that hoop is already on a downward slope. So this is a lot better than if you swap it the other way. Uh, because this one's just in the way, because it's coming up. I guess it's coming up that side too. This is an old trick I learned from James Reeves, and it works so great in RTAs. But big lesson is I need to move this. And number two, you must do whatever works for you because that is how vaping works. Now what I'm gonna do is take my little flat tool Put that in there and just raise that up a little bit. I don't want to manhandle it too bad, but I want to get it. Oh, yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. And turn it. Okay, so it's finger turned. Oops, I should have had my tool in there. Did you notice how it deformed? 
we put our tool back in and it won't do that. Whoop, there we go. I just want to make sure I don't have that little extra spot. Then really what I do is, in case you're wondering, I cram these things up against the posts and then pull them out later. It's very, very important that you are not touching the side walls in an RTA. You cannot touch the side walls in an RTA. If you do that, it will short and you will get atomizer errors. Short, atomizer short, atomizer short, and you'll be so annoyed. You'll be like, why did I do that? So look at them from the top. It's useful for me because I've been doing these tutorials so long that it's kind of second nature. Oh, that's so funny. I used the wrong Allen key. I tried to use the larger one. The other one is just in this. I think you judge too quickly, buddy. <laughs> that's what I think. One of the things to remember while you're doing these things is that it takes time to do these things. Of course, I'm taking a lot of time to show you how this works and everything. But we're going to take these and move them. So oh, everything works. So the airflow itself is going to be a little bit higher. But the most important thing is that if you want your wicking to work well, the coils need to be somewhere very near the holes down here because somewhere very near the holes down here because wicking is not magic it isn't a straw it's a scientific principle that involves about six different physics principles including cohesion and adhesion and all that and long time viewers will know that i lecture often on how a lot of designers i don't think steam crave is one of them clearly have no idea how the physical properties of their atomizers actually work a lot of people understand the uh Electricity part of it. Oh my gosh, that's like the easy part. But the physics principles, virtually nobody understands them virtually, as far as I've seen. I've never seen any evidence anyone's seen it, but maybe the world will shock me one day. But you'll see that another thing we're going to do here is we're going to use the Quick Wicks because the Quick Wicks has better stranding. Oh my God, look what I did though. There we go. Gotta poke that in. So that's going in, and it's pretty good, but I have to take it out because these are tiny. And I don't know about you guys. Can you guys set coils on velocity decks like this without taking out the coils? I can't. That's not my bag, baby. Okay. So, like I said, I do it the ghetto way. You can use a tool. Use a tool. It's all good. You should. I only try to point you guys in the right direction. Well, where is it? I can't find the hole. I hope none of you have ever said that. Oh, man, what am I doing? I feel like I'm having one of those days where... My tutorial skills have flown out the window. For some reason, you guys are the brunt of a bad cosmic joke today. Because I don't know where my camera is. Oh, yeah. I like this thing. One of the things I like about it is that these guys are clearly focused on juice flow control. And it is, in my opinion, useless to have the actual dial on the thing. I mean, I know that they're so proud of it, but it, it certainly doesn't need it. Most people who use the aroma miser are using it in a basically the same way. But it's good. It's flexible. So who can complain, right? But I do like that they focused on making it useful and not messy. It's pretty good. It isn't quite the OBS engine, but it's certainly not. Oh my God, even the original aromamizer was worse. They really got the airflow right with the giant side holes. Okay, so. I 
I love Shark 2. Let me ask you guys, what is your favorite RTA? I don't get this question that much asked anymore because I'm always volunteering that it's my Titan, but don't buy one. And uh, buy a squonker. That's what I've been saying for the last six months, honestly, is buy a squonker. But we love the Kensi RTA. We like the Kylan RTA. We like the Kensi RTA a lot better than the Kylan. A lot better. And it's cheap. What I really like about that is that they focused on the basic old school design that just works. I'm not a big fan of bubble tanks. I think they're kind of silly. Oh, Dane Bentley mentioned the engine V1. And that's so funny that you mentioned that because obviously you probably saw the episode I did last week on the engine V2, which is awesome, but didn't need any changes. I would take the engine V2 with the engine V1 deck any day. Many people mentioned Many people mentioned that the V1 and the V2, like the V2 didn't really need to have the changes that they made to it. That was really my beef with it, except that it's still really good. Like as an engine V1 owner, you'll probably believe me when I tell you that the flavor on it's great. It doesn't leak, but the deck is a little bit kind of like useless. You sort of look at it and go like, well, you know, okay, whatever you say, OBS. Okay, let's take this off, put it on a mod. So we can get readings. You guys want to see numbers? I do. I just hit my tea with my elbow and spilled hot tea all over the place. And speaking of which, I hope you're having a good morning. I'm Eli Juicy Jones. This is Eli Juicy Jones on Vape AM with coffee all over the desk. Michaela loves her, her uh, bubble tanks. She thinks they're awesome. <laughs> Dane says he wants the V2 with the postless deck. I hear you. Are you talking about the Supreme, the Aromalizer V2, or the OBS in this case? If you're talking about the OBS, I totally agree. Turn that down to way less. We're about 0.13. There's barely any power. I'm only pumping it to see if it's going to short. That's our only purpose here. Go back a little higher, shall we? Hit a different focus. I can hold it up now. Get a little. Cool off. Cool off in the way that I tell you to, please. Give it a few more. Remember Jay's Jay? I'm going to have my friend Jason Corlin 10 make me some cool coils that'll go in the aromamizer. Thank you again, Gary. Yeah, they're okay. So we're going to let that cool down. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to use the quick wicks today. And the reason is because this stuff is so stranded. It's like so good. We're going to make a little thing just like this. We're aiming for those two little holes. We're going to make the coils. We're going to make the cotton go like that. Sit on them. And they're going to have a natural kind of a brushy effect. We're going to try to reduce that to the minimum. That seems to work great. I don't put them through the holes or anything. I think the juice flow, I don't get enough juice flow as it is. Even with the juice all the way open and barely any wicks in there, I still get uh, dry hits on this thing. If I'm not going back in and revising and moving them around, you have to take your tool, which I've got here. I'm just waiting for that to cool off, like I said, and just move these guys around. Move it. You're like, oh, get out of there. Get out of that thing. Okay, thanks. You can get in there from there too. Push them around. This thing is pretty good. Flavor on this thing is absolutely mind blowing. Looks like Josh had a shorting on his first time. Yep, and another vote from Dane Bentley in the audience about how awesome postless decks are. Yeah, no kidding. I yeah, you guys all know. I just it's hard for me to see why pretty much everything isn't postless. It's why the Cali is the greatest RDA of all time. The bomb. Just don't need to improve on that. But they're trying. That's brand new. People barely know about that. Okay. Do this. So this is Quick Wicks. 
You'll notice that it looks a little bit different from the Juicy Wicks because it's just a, it's got a much, much, much more combed look. This stuff is so combed. I'm gonna pull off one block. That's all we're gonna need for this, even if I screw up. Put the rest back in the package. And we're going for a 2.75, what, between two and a half and three millimeter cotton comb inside here. And then I still need to even these up because I forgot to raise up this other one so that it's at the correct height. Mother Licka, you need to be at a better height. Ooh, yeah, and they're cooled off now. Oh, yeah, it's better. I still think I might have gotten them a little bit too wide. But it's not going to matter much. Okay. Do, 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 do. Just there has to be a Cali V2. I don't know. The Cali just came out in February. It doesn't need any improvement to me anyway. And they came out with an 810 for it. Thanks so much. In case you guys don't know, we really love the Cali around here. But hey. Normally I'm not having any trouble with this, but look, I'm having trouble. No, you're not. Okay, so. Embroidery scissors. Hi, I'm a king of scissors. I'm gonna come on, cut you. Hey, I think I'll cut you. I will. Thing is, we're gonna trim this so far down. I mean, we're not gonna use anywhere near that amount of cotton. So, as always, I'm gonna start on one side. And then we'll do the other one later, after, we're, after we've got this where we like it. And I think I, I forgot what I used. Yeah, let's try to use the flat one for now. But what I'm going to do is I just want this. Remember what shape we want. We want a C, a C shape. May almost a D, but really a C with a little bit almost touching. So I'm going to start over here. And I turn it upside down and just fold in from behind because I'm going to start pushing in a second and I want that to go straight, the equivalent of straight down. So I love my dental tools. They make this kind of easy. So we're just going in there. If you see me going over and over it, it's really just to make sure that I don't screw up the orientation of it. So, I mean, I could just stuff it in there. But we're not doing that. That ain't in our game. Although I did do that there. And in fact, just for size, I think it's too long. So it's coming out anyway, so it didn't matter. I'm going to pull it out. Then trim it and pull it a little further in. We are also going to break the water barrier on this cotton ourselves. <laughs> you see me pull that through with the scissors? Nice job, Juicy. You're so pro. There we go. Clean it up. And the reason you see junk on there is because remember back in the beginning of the show, I didn't have, I didn't actually remember to put this in the ultrasonic. It was just over by the sink, and then I ran and got it. So yeah, we're doing pretty good. This is going in. I'm switching to the rounded tool in a second if this doesn't start cooperating better. Quick Wicks is very, you can barely feel it. And it's very hairy. It's very, it's like the most amazing hollow core cotton stranding, but it's challenging. It's, it's definitely pro stuff. Okay. But it's the best. For all wicking or casual wicking, I recommend the Juicy Wicks because it's so easy and perfect. Okay, good. And you see how we've got that in there covering the hole. That's the only amount, that's all the wicking I used is the amount it took to cover the hole and get it to remain stationary and not allow any extra stuff. I'm just making a sad attempt to sort of keep that open-ended. These are hollow core cotton strands that have been combed out and those are way, way, way too long, so... For RTA purposes, I know this seems like a lot of trouble, but this is what I mean when I say it works. Or this is how I do it. I mean, I'm sure other people do it differently. 
And that is how the world is. I love these things. And frankly, I'm also just not in a huge hurry. We're here hanging out. It's vape AM. Saturday morning. I don't know about y'all, but we are going to do a bunch of stuff. We're going to go see The Incredibles 2 this morning. We're going to take a bike ride. I want to remind everybody that the prices for the Cali are in Canadian. So they're actually, the Cali is 53, 58 bucks. And the fatality, I don't know. So tell me what that is. I mean, how much? Oh, crap. Dr. Dolphy won Pulse at Bingo. Damn you. Dang it. Oh, no, I did Pulse it. You didn't win Bingo. We did that. Remember, I waited. Oh, you fooled me. That's okay. It doesn't take a minute. Watch me do this way quicker this time. You went Pulse at Bingo anyway because you fooled me into thinking that I forgot when I didn't. Or maybe that comment's older than I thought. <laughs> yeah, Michaela, you're so funny. This is too much. My fingers are psychically tuned in to two and a half and three millimeter inside diameter cotton densities just because of time. But that doesn't mean that yours can't be. And because of how ill that was, I'm going to just do this one separately with the other half. We're going short. We're going short. Yeah. You guys are so funny. Although I love the idea of Pulse at Bingo because I am the worst. <laughs> so funny. I do that all the time. It's a little bit long. Don't forget to leave yourself a little bit of length for a shoulder on top of it, though. So you can't just have it go straight down like a string down there. It's got to have some volume. Because remember, the purpose of the cotton is not being a highway. The purpose of the cotton is to stop the juice and to regulate it and keep it from flooding the coil. So it's a slowdown. It's not a speed up and it's not a straw and it's... There are things that can make it do that, like cohesion and adhesion and all that stuff. And you guys have seen my videos about that. I love that. I'm going to trim that too. I just pulled it through a little. I really don't want a ton of cotton. I want enough cotton in there to make sure there isn't e-liquid sloshing around. And I'm going to let the coil do the work. You have to have full cotton, but you don't want excessive. And everyone's definition of excessive is different. I guess that's the key. I'm a less is more builder. There's different ways to think. That's too long. It's close, though. So I'm not taking much off. In fact, I'm going to make it, I'm going to give it a shot. It's too long. I'm not giving it a shot. I'm, gonna... I'm like a vape barber. Oh, accidentally pulled one strand of the side diameter out. Okay, so now we're into stuff tech. Stuff, stuff, stuff. And we're just trying to cover up those holes. What I want is for the e-liquid to fully rush those holes. And absolutely just gush through. And then I want this cotton to regulate it from there on out. And that's pretty good. I've had good results with that. That's how I wake the Titan. The Titan requires more cotton than this by a long shot. Um, but you get to go back to the, co the Titan video to see that because it's just a little bit different on the inside because the postless deck requires more chicanery. To get all that accomplished. 
You have to really stuff it with cotton. Not a bad thing. There we go. Dr. Dolby, you're so funny. Oh, man, I love that. I love it so much. If you're just tuning in, I'm Eli Juicy Jones. This is Orbital Vaping Headquarters. High in orbit above Seattle, Washington. You're watching Vape AM. We are going over the Steam Crave Aromamizer Supreme V2. So cool. Oh, so now let's get this thing in its base. Actually, I don't want to do that, but I have to break the surface of the cotton and get some e-liquid in there. So let's do that. Do, 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 do. We're using churros by Van Gogh Vapes Bakery. This stuff is so amazing. If you've ever had cinnamon or ever been to New Mexico or Texas or Mexico, or if you're remotely in tune with anything Latino, you will have heard of churros. They are delicious. A little baked cinnamon snacks. Maybe your mommy made for you and they were just delicious. I don't give a rat shit what anyone says about break-in period or anything else. This this cotton, in a good way, is oriented and done so well that you have to break the surface of it to get it not to completely repel water. And that is a testament to what a tunnel this stuff is. It's so oriented. It's going to keep this shape, the C. It's going to move that e-liquid through there in that C-shaped path in an extremely reliable way. And it doesn't provide a lot of fluffy, um, spongy, moldy mm, area uh, just to hold up for leaking. So it's really more of a more of a technical cotton in this one. The Juicy Wicks is a lot more spongy. And works in 99% of cases, honestly, the Juicy Wicks. And the Juicy Wicks works well in this, but not well enough for me. I like the Quick Wicks. Oh, I'm excited. I'm so excited. This The flavor on this thing is amazing, y'all. And so you have no idea how excited I am. I hope you're excited. Now I have to find the atomizer. Do you guys remember which one I'm working on? At LOL. Remember I put it together? Oh, here it is. Ding! And now, because we have friends, we're so glad that Rob gave us the tip. Hey, dummy, it's easier to stuff this in here. So look at the tabs on the bottom, and you'll see that this has a sort of opposite shape as this, and it fits right in there. Or blam. I'm going to trim this because I'm anal that way, and I don't want extra cotton shards everywhere. Now I am, man. In fact, all i got to do really is tug on it. And these extra pieces off. Okay. And why not just put... Now we put this in here and line the tabs up so that it clicks in and we're all good. Now we put the bottom on. Don't forget to put your juice flow control ring on the right side up. Very important. And I want you to close... Oops. First of all, wipe off your atomizer now. Come on, Juicy, your hands are so greasy. Your hands are so greasy. Boom, doom, 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 boom, boom. <laughs> oh, Angela says I should re-wick it to make sure it's okay, buddy. Sorry, we just did that. Although I swear if it's wrong, we will do it. We've done that on the show many times. I've done it on reviews. I don't edit videos. I don't take stuff out. The most we do is make some mods for time. Here's our juice flow control. Closed. And until you get the whole thing sealed down, it's going to feel like it doesn't move, but it actually moves quite easily. It's because my hands are wet. Oh, that's so irritating. All right, so. On the mod. See, it's quite easy on the mod. There we go. We'll put a little more churros in there. When you fill the aromamizer, you want to close off the airflow and the juice. You can have severe leaking sometimes if you don't do that. And take my advice, like we say, for all RTAs. When you first fill an RTA, only fill it up enough to cover the juice intake holes. This one has 
the greatest characteristics, all the characteristics that I love of a great RTA. As you know, I like to let the machine do the work, and they have completely done that in this case. They've let the glass on the sides get the juice down to the bottom. The intake holes are here. It goes through the stainless steel to the bottom, and then goes through this little mechanism just to control how much goes through. And then you're in. It's in the. It's leaking right up to the bottom of the coil. Not leaking, but it's it's flowing right up to the bottom of the coils. So I absolutely love this RTA. I think the design of it and the anatomy of it is fantastic. You can control the juice flow. You see the bubbles? Bubbles. Just clicking, see, focus. Yep, so it's working. Those bubbles mean good. I'm gonna open it. Again, and put a little more in because it went through. And because you're at an angle from the camera, so I'm going to put just enough in so that the camera angle makes it look decent. Oh, Gary says his Puxos arrives Monday. That is fantastic. I can't wait to get the Puxos from Aspire myself. That'll be here soon. The Puxos is a 21700 single. Yeah, there we go. Our reading came out to 0.13. Right now it's a 54 watts. I'm going to turn it up to about 65. We'll take a vape altogether. This thing has like a lip contour drip tip on it. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, and Chris is asking the same question. Is this the best RTA ever? I don't know. I think that it's one of the best RTAs ever if you vape dual coils. Um, if you're very technical, if you don't mind the complexity of it. It's got absolutely fantastic flavor. It is undeniable. This is not... The best RTA ever, if you like mouth to lung, or if you're into extremely restricted airflow, you can restrict the airflow on this way, way down. But it only goes down to a certain point. Now, I will say that once it goes down there, it is good and it goes completely off. So you can get kind of remarkably good low airflow out of this. So, I would say that you should give it a shot if you like restricted airflow, airflow because the flavor on this is top notch and the velocity deck is okay. Excuse me. I had a little frog in my throat and the velocity deck on it is pretty good. It's pretty small. And so it would work for, it would work for a more restricted airflow thing. And I do like restricted airflow vapes myself. I don't like big super air, but this one does have the hugest air possible. But to me, the actual builds that you can put on the velocity deck in this thing can't catch up to the air that it provides. So the air is always turned almost all the way down. Um, the Titan wasn't that way. The Titan was maximum, maximum, maximum size build in there works best. But this one actually, two and a half millimeters is probably your sweet spot here, which is where most people vape on their things. My, my only real complaints about it at all, that flavor is so good. My only real complaints about it overall are that it's still a little airy almost all the time, so I have to turn it all the way down. That isn't really a con because it's just my preference, uh, but it just seems strange to me that I've got to like keep it down there. Same's true of the original Revo, though, so take that with a grain of salt, y'all. Uh, and it's relatively complex to build and tricky and kind of small, so it may not be suitable for viewers and vapors who have small fingers or maybe dexterity problems, but it may be okay, too. The one point... Two five. I'm sorry. The 1.5 millimeter size Allen key is a good size because that's one you're likely to have in your box already. That's cool. Comes with a good kit, and they really only cost between thirty and forty dollars. So I'm gonna say, hell yeah, this is a pretty pretty darn good RTA, and it might be one of the best ones there is. It's definitely one of the best ones I've got. But you guys tell me what you think too. Everybody who's watching on the replay, you chime in. You tell me. Everybody who's here watching, let's have a chat about this here in a minute. And we're going to wrap up the live portion of the show. Stick around if you're here live. But if not, and you're watching on the replay, this has been a look at the Aromizer Supreme V2. Thank you so much to Gary for sending this thing. I'm so excited. I love all you guys. I have really 
enjoyed this thing and I'm going to keep vaping it just forever. I got tips to get one of these when they came out and I got more tips to get them last year and I just never did it. I mean, there's no reason. I just didn't. Then I met Rob and he let me vape his and I was like, wow, I'm blown away. This is after I had the Titan, which had great flavor, I had to admit, even if it was impractical. And then there's a little cult on our Discord about of people who love the Aromavisor Supreme V2. So thanks so much for watching. All of you, click subscribe, click like, join us at West Coast Vape Expo, and stick around for the chat, the live chat, where we'll just hang out for a few minutes here. I don't have too much time, but we do have a little time. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hi. So y'all, it's only going to be a few minutes because I got to get my shoes on and we have to uh, get on the road and run a little errand and be back here by 10. So start chatting. How are you guys doing? What do you guys think of my look of the, at the, um, at the Aromamizer Supreme V2? I noticed that um, Dylan Carroll says, wants me to compare it to the Blitzen. That's a great idea. Got a Blitzen coming. I don't have one in the shop, but that's a great idea. Come to Discord, click on the link in the description and chat with Ems about it, Bucket Bear. And she's sending one, and then we'll do that all together. Love that idea. There's a whole episode right there. <laughs> you love Sadie in the background of the pig? Yeah, it's cool, huh? Thanks, Michaela. Uh, Chris Denton. Oh, we're thinking about that Puxos instead of the E-Leaf Ice Stick. Yeah, man, I know. that. Like, when I saw the Puxos, I was like, ooh, big eyeballs. It looks amazing. Um, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I begged Aspire to send that to me. I was like, please, I'm such a 21. So I'm like, you guys have been, we've been working together. Please send that. I love, I want, I want to see it. If it's a failure, I want to be the first one to know. And if it is in fact a good marriage of your chip, which where did I put my Aspire mod? I cleaned up a bunch of stuff before the show and I misplaced my Aspire mod. If it's really a good marriage of that chip that you guys put in everything else, including the Skystar and a 21700 battery, it's going to be a bomb. It's going to be great. So that was, that was my pitch to them. And they, they listened. They said, they're going to send it. They were nice. Uh, Gary, that's his favorite dual coil RTA. And that's the other thing is I haven't put a single coil in it yet, but I should do that. Um, Daniel Hill, yeah, the Pico 2. He's also interested in that thing. So am I. Looks good. I didn't order one, but I totally, totally, we all, you know, we talked about it the minute they announced it. I was like, oh, this looks cool. Great. Uh, Chris Denton, see Smock are finally releasing a dual 20 something 700 battery mount. Hey, man, come into, the, uh, paste that into Discord if you don't mind, because I haven't seen that yet. And um, you know how eager I am to criticize Smock. Smock will now finally be able to deliver some of the battery claims that they used to claim, like 213, 135 watts, y'all. 213 was 134 watts. Um, anyway, so, I'm sorry, that was Sigeli. Anyway, they're also bad. Smock is horrible for this, and uh, the 220. So, anyway, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be updating the 21700 batteries. I want to know all about it, so, it's the iPriv. Yeah. Cool. And Dylan Carroll says a Vapresso Armor Pro also. Yeah, I've seen that. I think somebody in Discord has one of those. And you know what else people have are the um, the Snow Wolves. Now, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Snow Wolf, but man, they look nice. I got to say, look nice. Really nice. And Ems is a big fan of hers. And um, the, the Jameson just got one. I think it's his. Yeah, pretty sure. He keeps posting about it. Oh, no, it's... Walker, Walker Fairy Vape, sorry, Walker Fairy Vape, so sorry. Anyway, she just got one, and it's amazing. It looks so beautiful. It is like some pretty stuff. So that is really cool. Man, I hate to feel like I'm in such a hurry, but I kind of am. We really have to run a bunch of errands, and we cannot be late for our 10 o'clock thing. Um, would you guys mind if I took off here a little bit early? You guys tell me. It's not like going to kill us or anything. The wolf head looks amazing for sure. Yeah, whoo, boy. It's fun to talk to all you guys. The Priv. Oh, you talked to the Priv? Really? I didn't know that, Michaela. How about that? That Skystar gets... The thing is, Aspire used to contract out their uh, their electronics, and so Aspire mods sucked for years. And then, not last year, but the year before, Aspire spent a ton of money to do in-house engineering, and they came out with 
um, that what was that the the Pegasus or anyway they came up with two mods with it and I people kept on telling me like Juicy you got to get one of these they're pretty amazing but I was in the middle of a 2700 revolution and the Spire didn't do it yet well last year I got a Sky Star just because I was so interested in the Revo and the science behind that and the Sky Star blew my mind that is still the only 18650 mod I think everyone should still just buy but I'm very excited about um about getting the Puxos, and I'm really excited about seeing a Sky Star in 21700. Oh my God! I know I'm not the only one. Man, I need a Sky Star in 21700, but the Puxos will be nice. Okay, well then you guys are okay with it. Well, I got then I gotta run. So I'm so glad. So you guys have been great. This is a really fun morning. I love all you guys. I will do an Instagram live, but it might, I might be doing my shoes and stuff. So check me out there. We're on Instagram. Click like and subscribe. Join us on West Coast Vape Expo. It's going to be a fun party. And I love all you guys. Thanks so much. It's been a really fun morning. I'm going to be using this thing all day. 21700 batteries in this thing too. And they're 30 Ts. So I get amazing battery life. I should probably put these in the charger while I'm getting ready. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.